Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Friday, July 21st. Over the next few days, we will continue to heat up across the Great Basin with our max temperatures going into the weekend, where many valley locations will reach over 100 degrees, if not all of them, and we will see some areas pushing record temperatures, especially from Idaho down into Nevada. With the ridge building in, we will have lighter winds overall for the next couple of days and also a decrease in lightning activity, but still some moisture remaining across the Great Basin for isolated thunderstorms. We will have to watch Sunday into early next week as the breakdown of the ridge starts to occur, so we will see more moisture being pushed up across Utah, but also an increase in winds across Idaho and Nevada, so that will be something we will need to watch after this heat and uh, looking at any current conditions for some gustier winds going into the early part of next week. Otherwise, fuels are definitely drying out across the Great Basin, and we obviously have a couple of team fires further north. Precipitation and lightning. We had isolated thunderstorms yesterday across parts of Idaho, Wyoming, and from eastern Nevada into southern Utah, with scattered amounts of precipitation. Most areas were light, but some areas in the darker blue saw amounts over a quarter or a third of an inch of rainfall. Great Basin fire activity continues to increase with light to moderate initial attack with most of those fires across Nevada and Utah associated with lightning as well. And then we also have a couple of new team fires up over parts of central Idaho and up into the northern side of the Boise district. Over the last seven days, we've seen above normal precipitation in the belt where we see it's all those thunderstorms, especially that were a little bit heavier earlier this week from central Nevada eastward across Utah. Otherwise, very dry conditions in the north and the far south, and these are, this is where our fuels are most critical. Our ERCs continue to climb in areas that remain dry up north and in the far south. You can see in Idaho, ERCs are now approaching that 90th percentile, even in the mountains up towards the Salmon Chalice, so definitely above normal, and these ERCs will continue to go up this weekend with the heat. Further south in that central area, we did see a decrease in ERCs just with the recent moisture, but we will likely see those coming back up with the increasing temperatures and likely the increasing wind. The satellite loop from this morning shows again the ridge of high pressure dominating the Great Basin and this will continue to build north. This trough off the northwest coast will move eastward and that will start impacting the Great Basin later this weekend into next week and again bringing those winds and the greater push of moisture up north for the eastern side of the Great Basin. So looking at our weather pattern today, again, that ridge builds in some remnant moisture for those isolated thunderstorms in parts of the Great Basin. No high risk as any coverage will be fairly isolated. Uh, certainly could get some new starts, but shouldn't have any wind outside of outflow boundaries. Relative humidity today will be dropping into the single digits across the western half of the Great Basin into the teens elsewhere. Again, those winds remain light. As we move into Saturday, more of the same with the ridge dominating lighter winds and again, remnant moisture for some isolated thunderstorm activity. Could see a bit of an increase in lightning activity over parts of eastern Nevada as that moisture kind of trickles northward. Otherwise, should stay on the isolated side. Significant fire potential, no high risk, but continued drying, especially further north, west, and in the south in areas that were not impacted by that recent moisture. Relative humidities drop in the single digits and low teens region-wide, and again, more light winds, maybe a slight increase Saturday in the far west and north, but again, still on the light to moderate side with most gusts in the teens or low 20s. As we move into Sunday, this is where things start to change. The ridge gets, starts to get pushed off to the east as this trough moves into the northwest coast, so some of that moisture will start wrapping around for possibly an increase in lightning activity. Also could see a slight increase in winds, again, over western and northwest areas, so that will have to be something we'll watch going into Sunday. And then still no high risk at this time for Sunday. So looking at relative humidities, unchanged on Sunday, still very hot temperatures. It looks like Saturday will be our hottest day, but Sunday still very hot. And then wind gusts, we will start to see that increase over western areas of the Great Basin. Probably nothing really high risk, high risk worthy at this time, but we will see the gustiest winds right along the Sierra front where we could see some of those gusts approaching 30 miles per hour. Also up north in Idaho, we will see an increase in winds, certainly from what we'll see today or tomorrow. Most gusts in the 20s, but again, we do have some active fire activity up there to monitor. So here's our temperature changes over the next couple of days. Uh, today and tomorrow, again, really things heat up with Saturday likely being our peak temperature day where many locations in the 103 to 105 range up north and around 115 down south. And then we will see some slight cooling by Monday into early next week as that trough moves in, so temperatures drop back down mainly into the 90s. 
three-day precipitation, very isolated precipitation with these storms the next few days. As we go into early next week, we will see a greater push of moisture as that ridge starts to break down and the moisture starts to get pulled up from the south. So we could see a greater increase of lightning for parts of eastern Idaho and northern Nevada and north northeast Utah, or northeast Nevada and northern Utah. No high risk yet, again, still showing that drying trend, but we are showing some of that moisture starting to impact southern areas, so we will see the turn to yellow in the as we move into Tuesday, that trough moves further into the northwest coast, so we certainly could see an increase in wind over northern areas and with active fires, that certainly could be a concern as we get into early next week, and that moisture continues to remain in place over eastern areas. Similar conditions on Wednesday. And for Thursday, still drying and could see some gusty winds. We'll see what the moisture does by that point. Seven day total precipitation, looks like mostly over the eastern half of the Great Basin with that push of moisture. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Could see a little bit more in some areas and a little bit less in others, depending on how the, how the models transition going into early next week. The eight to 14 day outlook shows warm conditions, but a return to above normal precipitation for the early part of August. So hopefully we'll see some of that moisture, but again, that'll be something we'll watch as we'll see a return of moisture, but also a return of lightning. So anything on the drier side initially certainly could be a problem initially, depending on how much moisture is pushed north. That concludes the webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.